In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at sequences and variables. Our key questions this lesson are, what is a variable? How are variables stored? What is a sequence? And why are sequences important? Please go into your workbooks and find this page in your workbooks. Try to put them in some kind of sequence. And there is an extension at the end of the page. Please pause the video now and complete this. Here's an example of a sequence. Remember, a sequence are the order of instructions that we run them in on a computer. This is really important that we give some form of order. When we're making a cup of tea, we don't put the water in and put the tea bag in afterwards. We could do, but to make the best cup of tea, we'd put our tea bag in first and pour the water on top of it. In that sense, you might have a slightly different sequence, but the inputs are important where you put them. Whenever we've asked a question, it's likely that we'd have an input so that the user can type something in. Now we've had an understanding of sequence and recap what we did last lesson, let's look at what variables are. Now we've covered variables before and we've done this in logo. Let's see how much we can remember. First of all, I'd like you to find this page in your workbook. There's a link at the top of the page. Please click on this link. Once you've clicked on it, I want you to play the game. Partway through the game, it's going to give you a definition of a variable. When it does that, please stop the game and give me a definition. Then you're going to see two variables appear in your code and in the game. Once you've figured that out, again, add these to this page. Once you've finished that section of the game, I want you to have a look at the scratch code. Can you figure out what the variable was in it? And can you figure out an example of a real life variable? Here are the answers. First of all, a variable is a value that can change, which tells the computer how to approach a task. Our variables in the game were time and heat. The variable in our scratch code is goals scored. A variable in real life, now there are hundreds of these and you'll all got different ones. One that I can think of quite quickly is how many behaviour points you have. That can change every day at school. But it's only going to change when you're at school, not when you're at home. So if we think of school as our programme that's running, they'll only change at a certain time while you're at school, like when the programme's running. In this game on the right hand side, we're not going to score extra goals when the programme is not running. When a computer is running, we store data of the programmes that are currently running in RAM, Random Access Memory. A variable is a small location in RAM, which allows us to save data. That data can change. So think of it like a box. You could store a number in a box and we could change that number. Each memory location has a name. That's so we can find it at a later date. Imagine trying to find something in your bedroom. Well, you know where you've stored it. Have you stored it in your drawers, in your wardrobe, under your bed? And each of those has a name where we've stored that data. Here are some variables you might have come across in games. You can see angry birds on the bottom left hand corner. We've got new life in. And we've got a time there, that's a variable, it's changing. That will count down until we get a new life. And we've got number of lives as well in the heart, currently at zero. But we can change that. Also in this game, there are some gems that you can collect. So you could re refill your lives, only if you have 60 gems though. You can also see Minecraft examples on the right hand side. The number of lives and hearts that you've got. There's a few other games here which have variables such as health, energy, willpower, top scores, points, goals, etc. 
Now remember we've said that we need to know where our data is stored in RAM. So that means our variables have to have names such as score and lives. We can use these again in the future. So here's our code from last week. We made a mini chatbot. Remember we've got a series of inputs and outputs here. The green are the outputs and where it says input, this is where the user can type in and is an input. Now when we ask them what's your name and they type something in, at the moment we can't use this again in the future. But using a variable we could use what they've typed in again. We do this by giving it a variable and in this instance I've called it name. We put that before our input, so name equals input. That means that in memory, in our RAM, there's a little area called name where, where whatever the user types in will be stored in that and that means we can get it back. Remember when we're playing a game, we might be halfway through it and we save our progress. That's stored in a variable inside our RAM. I've now uh, changed the variable name, user name. Now this would give us a syntax error because a variable can only have one word to explain it. So user name would not allow us to have a variable. We just have to use user or name. Once we've taken an input with our variable name, we can use it whenever we want. So remember, in our code, we're not actually typing someone's name, but we're just using our variables. So straight after we've asked their name, they can type it in using the input. It stores it in a variable called name, and we can reuse that. So I can say, nice to meet you, plus name. And by using the plus, we can refer back to a variable we've used before. So if I was to type Mr. Atkinson, then it would say, nice to meet you, Mr. Atkinson, on the screen. How do you think we could do this after the question one? What is your favourite football team? Pause the video and try and answer that now. The answer is, before our input, we would have something like team equals input. We can't have more than one word, remember? And then in our print line, we could put brilliant, I love, and we could put a plus there and put team. So to the user it would look like saying brilliant, I love, let's say for example Man United as well. So variables allow us to have much more interaction. I want you to go back to your trinket you were using in lesson one and try and add some variables into your chatbot code. If you want to use some code or you weren't in last lesson, you can use the lesson two help code and add some variables into that. So now I've created some homework and I've made some errors. What I want you to do is to have a look at my code and drag the red circles to where you think I've made an error and then explain why you think it's an error in the table at the right hand side. What I had to do was circle any inputs, remember there anything that says input, underline any variables and put a square box around outputs. Pause the video and try and complete that page in your workbook now. Let's have a look at some of the answers. First of all, number one. If we look at name, well this is not an input. Remember an input would say input. It's quite a simple one for us. Name is our variable. Remember how we used a plus and we added our variable afterwards. So number error one is that it is a variable and not an input. Number two. If we have a look at number two, we've got another error here. You can see that the 
person has forgot to underline that food is actually a variable. Even though we're not typing in, it's still a variable. And that's the same for number three. They've not underlined that as a variable. Number four. Again, they've put this as an input, but it's not an input. Remember, an input only says input. Anything that's printed on the screen is an output, and so they should have reflected that just here. 